you know, you guys saying how you went, you got press. You, so you, 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 you know, you, you, you got press when you launched. Well, sorry, was the press for the cool box or was the press for the beard club? So there was, there was both kind of um, at the same, well, around the same time. So we had a couple of press connections that we were able to tap on the shoulder, but most of our press actually came from um, people just loved our initial video and it just went on Reddit and then it got upvoted like crazy. So a ton of people saw it on Reddit and then it got put on product hunt, not by us. Like, so a lot of this was done organically and we kind of realized that this was a huge part of our formula that probably if we tried to do it ourselves, couldn't replicate. Um, it's really hard to force um, like something going viral and mm -hmm. to create that sort of recipe. So um, we were really fortunate that it did resonate so well with people that they went and you know, put it on product hunt, put it on Reddit. And from those two sources, I mean, that's, or I think 90% of our media coverage came from was those two. Amazing. And that, and how long was the halo effect on that? Was that like a week or two weeks? Like when you launched so, or like how, how, yeah. How long did you feel the residual hit from that? That was like the initial real push was probably three weeks. Um, and then after that things sort of died down, but by that time, you know, our next objective was to launch in Canada. We started in the U S and we're a bunch of Canadian dudes. We're like, Hey, we got to launch in Canada. So, you know, we started working on our second video. Um, and that was to launch like the, um, launch the Canadian market. And then we were able to kind of tap all the same people on the shoulder. You know, some of them were interested, some of them were not. Um, but it becomes more and more difficult to like, Hey, this is dollar beard clubs, 10th video. Let's, you know, see if the press is interested. Like there really has to be a story mm -hmm. around it. So we would try and position it with different like things like, Hey, you know, this is kind of the revenue that we did. And this is sort of like a really weird unicorn situation where we're selling like, you know, novelty cosmetics for men, but doing really well and growing. So, you know, as long as we were able to package things up, we can kind of continue to, to see that media attention. And, um, and to be honest, we were, I wouldn't say we were dependent upon it, but like that was a huge part of our early growth until we really um, understood a lot of our metrics and analytics and were able to, you know, get our website to a point where we could start buying media more effectively instead of just kind of throwing money out there and promoting videos and hoping that it was doing well, just to be able to attribute sales properly to those ads and, um, you know, have a more like, I guess you'd say like responsibly scalable business instead of one that was just kind of built on like, you know, the media pushes. Um, another thing that did really well for us was influencer marketing, um, that helped the snowball. I'm sure that got us on Reddit, um, and product hunt as well. Um, we had a number of different influencers that posted for us. Um, two of our advisors, Dan Fleischman and Brandon Hampton were, um, really big. Or they still are really big in the influencer world. They built a ton of influential accounts and helped other influencers build those accounts. So, um, they facilitated a lot of really great shares for us on that. Um, and then about three months in, my business partner, Chris, was talking to Dan Bilzerian, um, who's just a big great beard. Instagram influencer. Yeah, great beard. Um, very um, divisive guy, I guess you would say, uh, or somebody who divides the, the nation in half. Sometimes you either um, love him or hate him or hate to love him or love to hate him. But um, he was really excited by it and just kind of contacted Chris and was like, hey, I'd really like to invest in this. You know, we, you can leverage my following, which at the time was you know, only about like 12 million. Now he's got like 25. Um, so he came on as an early investor. And really at that point, we needed a bit of cash injected into the business because we needed to catch up for, you know, our, on our inventory and be able to, you know, create things ahead of time. It took about six weeks for our products to be manufactured. So um, if you stock out and it's still three weeks out, it's big trouble. Um, so that, that cash helped us a lot in that respect. And his following, um, whenever he'd share a video initially, he'd just go crazy and you know, we'd see thousands of signups and within a couple of days. That's unreal. I, I wanted to talk about Reddit. It's like Reddit is one of the biggest forces in the modern media. Uh, I think, you know, I was reading a headline that said like, you know, a headline on Reddit gets like a hundred times more eyeballs than, than a top CNN story at this point. Like Reddit is just this huge, huge force. But at the same time, they're so skeptical of consumerism in a way that it's yeah. like, it has to be an organic experience for it to, for it to go viral there at all. You, would you agree? Absolutely. And I, <laughs> we, we tried to do the same thing again and, um, you know, sort of created a contest around like, Hey, you know, vote, like we, we did a video launch where like, Hey, upload it on Reddit and you can win this and stuff. And not really like in, in a position, I'm sure there's Redditors watching this that probably hate me for confessing this, but we didn't do it out of like a place of like, Hey, let's try and cheat the system. We're like, Hey, like maybe this is a cool Avenue and like a cool way for more people to see our video. We had no idea if it was going to work. And, you know, the community found out about it. They're a tight knit community. And, um, you know, we kind of got 
kicked in the butt for that one. And uh, so that was taken down. And then we weren't allowed to post anything for a bit. Everything is good with Reddit. But yeah, it's the front page of the internet. And it's, um, you know, it's a really well, I don't want to say controlled community, but a really well put together community of people that care about the integrity of the mm-hmm. community. So and you know, that, like I said, that's kind of living proof of, of trying to force something. Um, you know, we didn't realize it was unethical, but I guess it was. Um, and it, it just sort of, uh, there, there are ways to more tastefully do it, I guess. Um, and to, I guess to have a presence on Reddit, um, without kind of like, you know, stepping on anyone's toes and doing it improperly. But, um, yeah, we learned our lesson on that one. It was a slap on the wrist. We're like, damn, <laughs> we thought we had this formula so down for any, for any Redditors out there. I'm really sorry if we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, we won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll be much slyer next time. Sorry, not sorry, till you find a better method yeah. uh, of making it happen, like all good marketers. I want to yeah. talk a little bit more about the early days of the Beard Club, when you started spending on Facebook, and you were still having this halo effect of these, of these. you know, you weren't attributing things properly, you were still getting lots of signups from your media things, and then, like, basically, like, what were the steps that you took early on to get your hands around, like, hardcore CPA marketing? Was that you?